أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة وسلام على رسول الله. Indeed, all praise is due to Almighty Allah. We praise Him. We seek His help. We seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness with no compulsion. That the nun has the right to be worshipped by Almighty Allah. And I bear witness that all the prophets from Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, are all brethren and that their message is one, to worship your God alone and do not set up any partners with him. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to my Muslim brothers and sisters. Also to my non-Muslims who are our brothers and sisters in humanity. Now, it gives me a great honour to tell you my story on how I came to Islam. Not just to tell you a beautiful story, but to remind the Muslims on what a beautiful way of life we've been given. Also to educate the non-Muslims on what Islam truly is. Now, I come from Australia. Growing up, from a, from a non-religious family, growing up, no religion was ever preached to me. But I remember as a child, calling out to God, asking God for help, thanking God, my God, how many God, thank you. This is a natural thing for me, inclined, I was naturally inclined to this as a child. Now, as a teenager, the word God or the name God started to change, like universal manager, high power, the high, most high. The reason being because the word religion would put me off. See, in religion, they portrayed God as a man, or a man can become God, or a man can become a statue, as God is a statue. This doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to anybody. So what I did was, I would connect my, my, to the universal manager through meditation. And I believed that there was a purpose of life. That the true self is spirit. And the spirit wants to return back to its origin, back to its originator which is the creator of the Most High. So I believe in the Most High. I believe that the true self is spirit. Now, the personality that you pick up is something that you get in the world. Now, even having... See, I used to meditate and connect and try to connect with my life, trying to bring good into my life and trying to uh, live my life according to what the Most High wants me to do. Or I'd rely on the Most High to give me good in my life, bring good people into my life, good job, good anything. I'd always meditate on it. And, and every day I'd meditate and try to, in a, in a peace, trying to find inner peace and trying to live and bring an outer into my daily life. Now, I was living like this for a while. Now, even having dialogue with religious people, like Christians and people like this, they would ask me, do you have a religion? Do you believe, what's your belief? I go, I'm... Universal. I believe in the highest manager of the of the universe. And they're like, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And I go, yes, I do believe in Jesus Christ. They're like, oh, well, you're Christian then. I go, no, I don't believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ the way you do. I believe he was sent as a spiritual doctor to people who were spiritually sick. Because the people that he was sent to were spiritually sick and they forgot about the true self and they forgot about the Most High. So that's why he was sent to those people. And I always had a, I always believed in the character, Jesus Christ. I always believed in him. Didn't believe in religion, but I believed he was sent as a, as a spiritual power, a spiritual person. And I believed his power wasn't his own. He was working off the highest manager, the highest, the Most High, the Universal Manager, the Universal Energy I believed he was working off. Now, every year, 
I will try to develop myself mentally and physically and spiritually through meditation and living the life and trying to bring good into my life through meditation. Now I remember turning back to God. I said, okay, God, make me more powerful in my mind. Make me more powerful in my spirit. Make me more, more powerful in my life. Now, because it was, it was a long time since I turned to God. So I remember as a child I was turning to God, thanking Him and and then the religion put me off, or religions put me off, so I started to call God different names. So I went back to God, or I turned back to God and said, please do something for me this year. Please make me more powerful. Please better my life. Please make me more powerful in my mind, my body, and my spirit. Now, within 24 hours of making this supplication to God, someone who knew my spiritual character gave me a Quran. Now normally, if anybody would give me a religious piece of information, I would disregard it straight away and go, no, I know who I am, inner and outer, and I know who the Most High is. So I don't need your religious rubbish, your, your religious crap. So I shut the door in their face. And so I used to, like, I used to even have dialogue with these people. And I used to be thinking, God is one. You know, God is not in a man, not behind four walls, not in a statue. God is one Most High. This was my belief before Islam. Now, reading the Quran, I'm thinking, okay, I'll read it. I'm not gonna, I've got no intention of becoming any religious person or whatever. So I thought, okay, what's, what's in this book? Now, what I found in this book was that God is unique to his creation. He is not a man. He is not, a man cannot become God. He's not behind four walls. He's not a statue. He's unique and great to his creation, and he is separate from his creation. He does not become his creation. And reading the Quran, it wasn't that I was reading the Quran, it was the Quran was reading me. It was telling me what my belief is, what your belief is, what your way of life should be, and how you should conduct your life. It was telling me, this is what you believe in already. And I, I thought, okay, accepting it as my belief, already natural belief, just enhanced, I said, okay, I'm going to learn to pray, and I became Muslim. I didn't tell anybody, I said, okay, uh, I'm Muslim now. Didn't tell anyone, didn't know any Muslims around my area, didn't know any, any mosque, no, no, nobody. I didn't know anybody. I said, okay, I'm already living, trying to connect with the higher power. Now, meditation and all this now, Islam has made it happen for me. This came naturally for me. I didn't have to say, yes, no, maybe, should I become Muslim? Should I become, no, this happened. I didn't even make a choice. It was made for me. So, in... In January 7, 2011, on my 24th birthday, I performed the Declaration of Faith. But even before then, I was even praying and praying, and I even did Ramadan in 2010. And this is when I wasn't even officially Muslim. But in, I made the Declaration of Faith when, on my 24th birthday, on January 7. Now, Islam. What does Islam mean? Well, Islam has two meanings. Islam in Arabic means submission to the one God. And the word Islam derives from the word Salam, which means peace. So in short, peace by submitting your will to Almighty God. And now what is a Muslim? A Muslim is someone who submits his will to Almighty God. Now every prophet and every revelation taught this. Abraham did not come with his own religion. Moses didn't come with Judaism. Jesus didn't come with Christianity. Noah didn't come with Noahism. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi didn't come with peace be upon all the prophets. Muhammad didn't come with his own religion. They all came with one way, one message, which is Islam. They all taught Islam and they were all Muslims. Anyone who followed the prophets were Muslim. Submit us to the will of Almighty God. Now, in the Quran, 25 messengers have been mentioned by name. Now, in, his, in the Quran, it also tells us that a prophet was sent to every nation across, across the globe. So, in all, over 1,200 messengers were sent to deliver this simple, basic message that God is one. And it is not, you do not set up partners with God. He is the only one that is worthy of worship. That was the message. Islam was the message. 
and the people who follow this message are Muslim. Submit this to God. Now, in Islam, we believe in that God is one. We believe in the revealed books. We believe in the messengers. We believe in the angels. And we believe in the day of judgment. And we also believe in the divine decree. Meaning, God knows what is going to happen, what has already happened. He is the all-knower, the all-seer. He knows the future, past and present. We have been given free will to choose for ourselves, but God knows in our hearts who is sincere and who is not. Now the principles of Islam. We testify that God is the only worthy one of being worshipped, and that Muhammad is the final messenger to all mankind. Every other prophet was sent to their nation only. Muhammad وسلم, was sent for all mankind. We pray the five daily prayers. We give charity. We fast in the month of Ramadan and we perform Hajj. Now, people try to obtain peace and happiness through worldly gain, through a career, through uh, children, through... They try to find ways of life to make them happy, but it does not work in the long run. People try to read books, they read how to, self -help, how to get rich books, but you see people reading novels and trying to get this um, emotional stimulation, but when it comes to the best book for all mankind, they disregard it. Now, Islam is not just a religion where it's preconditioned where you have to believe in something to become a Muslim. Islam is implemented. It's, you must implement Islam. It's a way of life, a system and a law that caters for all, all needs of a human being, mentally, physically and spiritually. I challenge anybody to come up with a better way of life than Islam. Submitting your will to Almighty God. Living a healthy life for your body, for your mind, and to live a spiritual life. A, a, a well-grounded life. The best way of life. So Islam has the solution to every single problem in the world. And it, it, it's, it's a way of life that connects and unites humanity as a whole. Look at Hajj, the pilgrimage, every year. Over 3 million people from all around the world, from all different backgrounds, from all different faiths, come to worship solely the one God. And this is the, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the universal, universal brotherhood between Muslims that you do not find anywhere else. It's unique. It's unique. You are worshipping your God alone. You're connecting as humans, mentally, physically, and spiritually in Islam. It's a way of life. Don't think about it as a religion. Religion. It is something you believe in and you do nothing. Islam is a way of life, a system and a law that every prophet came with. Every prophet conveyed this and the people who were following these prophets are Muslim. Now let's talk about the Quran. The Quran is the only revelation preserved in its original language, Arabic. Not one dot or line has been changed since its revelation. Now to prove this to you, Men, women and children have memorized it since its revelation. So even if you threw every single Quran into the ocean, it would only take one person to reproduce it line for line for line. See, the Arabic language is so rich. There's so many words. One word can mean a lot of things. Now, if you change one little dot, one little line in the Quran, it is no longer the Quran anymore. See, every other revelation has been chopped and changed. See, we believe in the Torah, which was sent to Moses, peace be upon him, in its original form. We believe in the Gospel, the revelation sent to Jesus as one book, not 66 books, not 72 books, one book. Gospel of Jesus, Saint Jesus. Where is that today? I want to know where the Gospel of Jesus is today. We believe in the Psalms of David in its original form, in its original language. And we believe in the final revelation sent to all mankind, the Quran. See, every other revelation has been chopped and changed. It's been lost in translation. We don't have a... You, you, you differ between what is the true Bible today. Or you, even if you throw every Bible on the ocean today, you, no one will be able to reproduce it because no one knows who the, what the correct Bible is today. We, we only have according to this person, according to Luke, according to John. I want to know the, the gospel according to saying Jesus. Now, in the Quran, 
all these books have been abrogated into into the teachings of the prophets of Jesus, Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, and all the prophets are abrogated in the Quran. The message of those prophets are in the Quran. It's been abrogated to to teach you the true meaning and the true messages of of these prophets. Now, the Quran is a manual on how to live life. If there was a book of art of living, the Quran would be the best book to live by. So, for example, the Bible tells you you have problems, but does it have a solution to these problems? No, it tells you this to believe someone died for you on the on, on a, severely and uh, violently died for you on the cross, and then you, you're 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 fine. You don't have to really implement anything in, in your life. But this is but the Quran has a solution to these problems, to alcoholism to racism, to a uh, number of women being unmarried. It's got so many solutions to every problem in the world, to hunger, to... It's got a solution to every problem. And the prophets are role models. They are the high standard character in the Quran. See, in other books, messengers and prophets are, are seen as people who commit incest, people who have drink alcohol. Would God choose, does this make sense to you? Would God choose these people to convey the message to, all, to their people? Would he choose people like this? It doesn't make sense. He chooses the best of character, noble character. And the prophets in the Quran are noble. And we give them high status as, as messengers of God sent to deliver the, the message of Islam. Islam, submission, your will, submit your will to Almighty God. Now, Islam is the only religion, if you look at all the religions across the world today, it is the only religion that practices the acts of worship of prostrating to the ground. See, in, in the first days of the prophets, every prophet prostrated to the ground and their followers, the, the prophets taught their followers how to pray. Jesus, peace be upon him, taught his people how to pray. Why are you not praying today like this? Who prays like this today? Glorifying your Lord, prostrating, bowing down in front of God. Now, to attain salvation, this is a very important subject. To attain salvation, you worship your God alone with no partners. Jesus Christ even said, someone came up to him and said, Good master, how do I attain eternal life? He said, why call me good when there's nothing good but God? Now, if you want to attain into life, Keep the commandments. And the first commandment is, what is the first commandment? Here, O Israel, your God, your God is one. One God. Do not set up partners with Him. That means one. Do not set up any equals with Him. This was the first commandment. The second commandment is, do not have graven images, statues, pictures. Do not worship anything besides God, the Creator, not the creation. Now today, I invite you it's an invitation to invite you to, your, to the best way of life, to worship your God alone. And to the atheist, I ask you to come back to your birthright. You're only an atheist because your parents or the society has made you think different of God. Or religion has put you off, as it puts many people off. Even me today, it's the word religion still puts me off. The word deen in Arabic means a way of life. Islam is a way of life and it is, it is for every, everyone in the world. Not this for a selected few, not this for the Jews uh, or, the, or the black people or the, or the Chinese. It's for everyone in the world. It's not for a culture. It's for mankind, for your spirit. Now to the Christian, if you really love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, follow his teachings. Muslims are the true followers of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. One, in appearance. If you see, if you close your eyes and think of a mental picture of what Jesus looked like, you see a beard, you see a white phobe to the wrist, modest. You see his mother was covered with a veil. You never see a Mother Mary with her head shown. Now who looks like this today? The Muslim women look like this, and some Catholic nuns. So who is following Jesus Christ? 
We, our men, look like Jesus Christ. You look at us today, we all look around like Jesus Christ. Two, in manners, Jesus Christ said, peace be upon him, he said, spread the word of peace. He says, Shalom Aleikum, in his, in his language, Aramaic. Now, who continues this practice today? Jews say Shalom Aleikum, but the Jews do not believe in Jesus. Muslims believe in Jesus, and we greet our brothers and sisters with Salam Aleikum, peace be upon you. He told you to do this. Why aren't you Christians doing this? It's the Muslims that are doing this. Now, in religious issues, Jesus said to be circumcised. All Muslims are circumcised. Jesus said, do not eat pork. We do not eat pork. Most Christians eat pork, you know, on a Christmas day or whatever. Now, he said, do not use interest. Jesus forbade interest. Most of the Christian lands today are built on interest. Now, Islam, it is a major sin. Now, alcohol. Jesus forbade alcohol. Now, we do not drink as Muslims. We are told in the Quran that it's the work of Satan. Now, you see many Christians today, they're drinking wine in the church. They're drinking on Christmas Day. They're getting so off their face of alcohol. It's, it's causing... It's, it's, uh, alcohol is a, a bad thing for all mankind. It's, it's strained. To, see, in Islam, when Muhammad Sallallahu got commanded to get rid of alcohol, the streets of Medina were, were flowing with wine. They got rid of wine. So this is what I'm calling to you. It's a solution to all facets of life. It is beneficial for you. Don't think of it as a religion. There's many, there's many people who believe in God, who believe in a spiritual connection. But through religion, or the people who betray religion, they get put off. And they don't want to become a... They don't want to, they don't want to be committed to uh, a certain way. So, my message to you, to the rest of mankind, aren't you looking for a way out? Are you truly happy or satisfied with your life? Are you properly, are you fulfilled with your life? There's, you, there's, there's something missing. And that, that thing that is missing is your connection with your Creator, the one who created you, who knows best for you. And the final revelation that He sent for all mankind is Lam, the Quran, and the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu one of the best characters is the, to live your life according to this. Many say that, oh, religion, Islam is not a life. Oh, it's, you, don't, you, get, you don't get to do things. Islam is for every way of everything you, you do in Islam. It's for, every, it's for everyday life. And it's, it's the best for you, for everyone. Don't take my word for it. Do your research with an open heart and open mind. And approach the Quran with that intention that you're seeking the truth. If you're sincere in seeking the truth, it'll be easy for you to accept. There's many who have read the Quran, but out of arrogance and pride, they don't accept. I even know some people who, who understand Islam, who have this character, but, but out of arrogance and, and pride, they don't want to take that next step. And there's also people from other religions who read the Quran and, and they, they try to find fault with it. Now, if a book of God has any fault in it, it is not a book of God. The challenge is being given 1400 years ago. If you do not believe that this book is from God, try to produce a verse like it. See, in the, the Quran, there's no two Qurans. There's, there's only one Quran. There's not even two different verses. If you get another Quran, another Quran, it's the same. There's no two, not even two different verses in the Quran. As for other scriptures, other books, you have one book has 66 books and one other Bible has 72 books. Or one different verse has been abstracted, subtracted, and one's been added, chopped and changed to fit man's desires. So you've got to look into yourself. The true Christians, read your Bible and find the true message. The true Christian, a true sincere Christian, always becomes Muslim by God's will. So I ask Almighty God to guide you all to the straight path and to forgive me for anything I've said wrong today. If I've offended you, I did not mean to offend you. Please forgive me. I ask Almighty God to forgive me for I am not 
perfect. I'm only a human being. We all make mistakes. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you again to the straight path. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.